Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide taken from a case of Crohn's disease, and this is the right colon. We can see here very, very clearly that there is an extremely deep and narrow ulcer that penetrates very deeply into the wall of the colon. It goes through the submucosa, through the muscularis propria, and right into the subserosa. This is known as a fissure or a fissuring ulcer. And we can see here the wall of the ulcer, which is composed of inflamed granulation tissue. And we can see inflammation all the way down into the subserosal layer. Therefore, you can see that in Crohn's disease, there can be sinus tract formation as well as fistula formation as a result of these very, very deep ulcers. So the inflammation in Crohn's disease is often transmural. It is through the full thickness of the bowel wall. And in fact, here in the subserosal fat, we can also see some lymphoid aggregates, which is evidence of inflammation. Here is another part of an ulcer that is partially sampled. And again, we can see this acute inflammation within the ulcerated area. Let's take a look at some small biopsies. And here, side by side, are two other examples of Crohn's disease, and both of these are small biopsies. Let's first take a look at the example on the right side. And this is a piece of colonic mucosa. Over here, we see mucosal ulceration with this ulcer bit granulation tissue, lots of blood vessels accompanied by acute and chronic inflammation. So there is mucosal ulceration, which is a feature of activity or of active inflammation. Another feature of active inflammation can be seen in this biopsy here. And if we look at the crypt, we can see that there are a lot of neutrophils that are infiltrating into the crypt epithelium. And this is known as cryptitis. This is also a sign of activity. Sometimes we can have aggregates of neutrophils within the lumina of the crypts, and those are known as crypt abscesses. And yet another feature of active inflammation is seen on the left picture. Here we can see that there is a slightly pale aggregate of cells and on higher magnification we can see that this is actually an epithelioid granuloma where we can see epithelioid histiocytes with elongated slender nuclei and fairly abundant pale eosinophilic cytoplasm. The presence of granulomas um, the presence of granulomas not in association with damaged crypts is suggestive of Crohn's disease. Of course, we would also have to exclude infectious colitis, for example, TB colitis or TB ileitis. So we have seen some features of activity such as ulceration, cryptitis, as well as granulomatous inflammation. Let's look for some features of chronicity. And in this particular example, we can see that there is shortening of the crypts. There is branching or some architectural distortion. And also over here, we see a lot of plasma cells at the basal aspect of the mucosa. And this is known as basal plasma cytosis. These features are indicative of the presence of chronic inflammation or chronicity. Looking around in these biopsies, we do not see any evidence of dysplasia. Hence, in summary, here are some examples of Crohn's disease, which is a type of inflammatory bowel disease. We have here a very deep fissuring ulcer with transmural inflammation. We have in this biopsy cryptitis. And we have here granulomatous inflammation. Ulceration, cryptitis, and granulomatous inflammation are features of active inflammation or activity. And we also have features of chronicity or chronic inflammation, including crypt architectural distortion, crypt branching and shortening, as well as basal plasma cytosis. The main differences between Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis on microscopic examination are the presence of transmural inflammation in Crohn's disease as well as deep ulcers and also the presence of granulomatous inflammation.
Thank you.